What's up, you guys? It's movie retrospective time. Yeah, and I got a drink from last night. <laughs> I got the fucking new refrigerator upstairs, the new ice maker upstairs. So you know, if I don't ever, sh if I don't finish a drink, I just fucking put it in there. I don't have to go downstairs or anything. I'm like a king. I'm like a king. <laughs> put it in there, and then wake up the next morning and put dice in it. You're like, oh, a little yeah. hair of the dog Out of there. My cute ice maker sits on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> party ice machine. That's the party ice machine. Yeah. Uh, maybe we might have a little bit of a drinking problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, we're just, we're just having a good time. Yeah. All right, so uh, go back to the 1970s. 1970s monster movie for this one. This is one that I saw as a kid. I didn't see it in the theater, but I think I saw it on cable like in the early 80s, I mm. want to say. And I remembered it specifically because Stephen King talked about it in Dance Macabre, which I've read like a zillion times, when he was kind of talking about a lot of 70s eco-horror. So when this popped up on Hulu a couple weeks back, I was like, oh, we got to put that in the poll. And it won like handily. Like yeah. it, it was like all the votes. First time I saw this thing, is I saw a damn TV trailer, or a trailer on TV for the movie going to be played. And there's a little clip of this fucking boy hopping away in a damn sleeping bag. And boom, he goes flying and hits a damn tree or a rock or something, explodes into a bunch of feathers. He was screaming, running from that fucking bear. <laughs> and during that time, I was a little kid, my Aunt Lois and fucking my aunts and shit, they were taking me up to fucking Sequoia National fucking forest up in the redwood forest so it looked just like that place every time i'd go there and it, and i was i saw that right before i went so the whole time i was up there i was fucking man i, I was didn't want to i didn't want to shut the sleeping bag all the way <laughs> because so of i that could get out yes yeah, so i could get out but it, this and then like a couple months later maybe around that same time it may, may have been before or after i don't know they were showing clips of that uh, photograph stills of this thing in fangoria magazine that shit was on the newsstand my cousin Wesley was buying from Fangoria, and it was this movie scared scared me, and I didn't see it till later. But just knowing of its existence scared me. Saw so seeing the trailer and the and and the pictures, uh, in fact, in Fangoria magazine, and um, I I did see it eventually. Anyway, this is before this is before Alien One had come out. Or and right around the same time. I, I kind of feel like it was the same year. This came out. This is yeah. Prophecy, by the way. And it came out in 1979. The way I remember it, this came out first. It might have. That's how I remembered it. Because, it maybe it didn't, but I remember this one coming out first. And aliens sucking all the damn air out of the room. This, I remember this movie being real popular. Adults talking about it. Or teenagers talking about it. They were probably teenagers. To me, they look like adults. They were talking about how great it was, but then, then it vanished, and all they were only talking about Alien. Then I saw Alien. My dad took me to see Alien, and uh, Alien fuck topped it all, blew it away. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Alien kind of came on the scene, and ever yeah. all the other movies were like, "Well, shit." Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes later, I was I was able to catch this movie. I never saw it in the theater. I think I saw it on VHS, and uh, wasn't too impressed with it. That was my uh, uh, original memory of it. We watched it again last night, and uh, it was good. It was restored. And it, it's yeah, good. it looks really nice. Uh, so if you have Hulu, you can watch it on there. You can probably watch it on other streaming services, too. But that was, like, one of the reasons that I wanted to rewatch it, because I hadn't seen it since I was a kid. And I remembered it being, like, kind of cool, like, kind of just like a big, stupid, like, 70s eco-terror monster like movie. Or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, but I had forgotten how entertaining it was. Yeah. Uh, just... I don't know. I kind of feel like maybe even people that like this movie are talking about, you know, how stupid it is and stuff. But I don't even know if it's like stupid. It's just I don't know. There's something like really entertaining. It's not even all that cheesy, really. No, um, Mercury gets in the water. It makes mutant, yeah. mutant creatures. One of them is a big old bear. The Native Americans think it's one, it's one of the Native Americans who's who's like their chieftain or magic man. He thinks it's the return of, of an Indian god. He's my favorite Indian. <laughs> He's my favorite. my favorite Indian. Yeah, man. They got the, the older guy. The old I think his Indian. name is uh, Mirai. Yeah. I, I, the first time I've seen him in this movie, they go, that's that's my favorite Indian right there. I give him a bad. <laughs> There's a fucking badass shot where he's watching uh, the fucking 
burning fucking car or wasn't a burning car that he was looking at? It was a car at? or a cabin. I can't remember. Because yeah. didn't like the man bear pig come in there? It's like all Yeah, the, the man, man bear pig, pig comes and fucks some <laughs> shit up and he's sitting there with his sunglasses on his old man, old Indian guy and you can see the fucking burn, the, the, the reflection of the bird and shit in his glasses. It looks like he had flaming eyes and it was just kind of like the idea of this thing was possessing him. And he already had mercury poisoning himself. He was crazy. The old, old, old yeah. Indian guy was crazy. It's a great character though. Liked it, liked the movie, man. It was, it was pretty neat. It's retro. Everything about seventies disaster flicks and monster movies, it's it's represented in this movie. And as I said, it's, it's all, yeah, it's kind of one of those nature run amok ones yeah. where you know we're fucking with the environment, and yeah. so the environment's going to come back and like whip our asses for us. Yeah, in, in the form of like a big giant man bear pig. Mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if now that I'm seeing it again, if that's where the idea for man bear pig came from. I don't know because. It, this definitely does look like a man-bear pig. It's a big old bipedal bear. Probably about 15 feet tall. Yeah, like I think that. he's supposed to be 20 feet, as, as, at least according to what I read. But Okay, it's big. It's a, it's a big It doesn't bear. have much hair on it. It's pretty fucking distorted looking. And it's and it's having cubs and shit. They find the cubs, and they look like... And they, and they try to take care of the cubs. They eventually drown the cub like fucking cubs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it did try to eat Talia Shire's face, so yeah. there's that. <laughs> it, yeah, the cub was cool until it saw its mama, and then it remembered it was a bear, I guess. It started attacking everybody. Oh, yeah, fuck these humans. Yeah. It had Talia <laughs> in there. You did this to me. Had Talia in there. That's that's the same uh, actress who played uh, Adrian from, from Rocky. From Rocky, yeah. Yeah, she was looking cute in it. That, she's like the uh, she's the Italian Barbara Eden. She looked yeah. a lot like Barbara Eden if you were to make her, give her blonde hair. I was talking about it. Last night it says, you know, she looks like Barbara Eden. But they have her always have her real plain. They try to make her look plain. That woman's gorgeous. They, That's what like makes me laugh. Because yeah. I kind of feel like they did that to her in the Rocky movies. Yeah. Like she's but I don't know if they I don't remember if they said this outright, but I think yeah. they tried to make her kind of homely and I'm yeah. like, she totally isn't. Yeah. No. So I just, I don't know. I no, you could do that to Barbara Eden and get the same effect. Yeah, they got Barbara just had fancy hair and clothes. <laughs> yeah. You and your fancy hair. Fancy ass hair. <laughs> I was gonna say when we were talking about the the monster in this uh, do you know who who it was in that suit? It was um, Kevin Peter Hall, the same guy that was in the Predator suit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that really, really tall, tall black dude. Yeah, he died yeah. young. Yeah, died of cancer. Uh, no, it was, no, it was AIDS. AIDS. That's what it was. AIDS. Yeah, he got. He was actually. He was in a car accident. Got a transfusion. And he got a transfusion, and he right. got AIDS, and That's he right. died. He was thirty six. Yeah. Uh, he was. Yeah, but he was in the first two Predator movies. Everybody he liked was in, him. Everybody he was in the he was suit. Great. Everybody said he was a great guy. Because he was what, like six foot eight or yeah. six foot nine? Like he was like ridiculously yeah, tall. Yeah, so he was a clown. He would get on, get on there and clown around all the time. He was and Harry and Harry and the Hendersons too. Yeah. Yeah, like the big Sasquatch monster. He was in like a lot of stuff like that, but. Uh, yeah, I so it was a strong movie, a lot of strong, uh, strong practical effects for the time. Yeah, for its time, and uh, budget was good, edit was good, good score, good acting, story was pretty good. I mean, it's a movie it, of its time. Sure. I mean, as I said, if, you know, in the '70s they had a lot of these eco terror, you know, nature run amok things, and most of them were, you know, environmentalist kind of messages. It's a little heavy handed with that, but I thought I don't yeah. know, like a lot of them were. It didn't really bother me all that much. A lot of the Indians were. We're Italian. Well, at Italian least Indians. Armand, Armand Asante <laughs> yeah. plays kind of like the main Native American guy, yeah. John Hawks. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, there's the storied Hollywood t tradition of Italians, Italians playing Native yeah. Americans, yeah. and here we have it again. I'm not yeah. sure about the other actors, but yeah, he's for sure Italian. He just like random people. Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, Italians <laughs> and Mexicans. Italians and Mexicans. Isn't that sad? Uh, yeah, I'm well, glad. easier to get a hold of. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad they did, they're trying to like not they do try. that so much anymore, they but try. yeah, they did do that a lot back then. This was actually directed by John Frankenheimer. Now, this was the only horror movie that he did. Um, he was more of a political thriller type of guy. Like, he did Manchurian Candidate. He did French Connection 2. He did Birdman of Alcatraz, Reindeer Games. I think he did Ronin, which is a great movie. Uh, and he just wanted to take a swing at a horror movie, but... He didn't really like how this one turned out. He said, well, he uh, ha was having a lot of problems with alcoholism around this time, and he, like, kind of attributes it to that. Maybe he was kind of drunk or hungover or whatever. And he's like, it didn't really come out the way he wanted. And it wasn't real financially successful either. Um, so it kind of disappeared. But I, I feel like it did kind of get you know, some life in it later, like on cable and stuff. And the guy that wrote the screenplay for this was the same guy that wrote the screenplay for The Omen. The first okay. one, yeah. uh, you know, uh, David Seltzer, his name is. And uh, so, yeah, so the story behind this, you got a couple 
who the the husband is he's a doctor right and he works in some unnamed big city i'm assuming it's supposed to be new york city or chicago yeah. or wherever i don't know they didn't say where it was but he uh he kind of works with uh you know the poor disadvantaged and uh, they, I saw this one review that called him the ghetto doctor. Yeah. The ghetto doctor. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, there, there was kind of a thing during the 70s where there was the tenement buildings and the babies were, like, getting bitten by rats and all this other stuff. So he's going in there, like, trying to sort that problem out. But he's getting real disillusioned because... He's like, look, it's like, this, I, I try to do something about it. I try to fix it. I try to sue the landlord for having these conditions and stuff, and nothing yeah. happens. Like, nothing changes, and I just feel like I'm hitting my head against yeah, the wall. Yeah, the city was all corrupt. Yeah, and so it's just, so it's just kind of like, so he's getting really, like, bummed out. Yeah. Meanwhile, his wife, Talia Shire, who is, she's like a, a cellist, right? She's like a yeah. concert cellist. And um, she is pregnant, but she doesn't want to tell him that she's pregnant because he's kind of like, we're not bringing any children into this horrible world type of person. Uh, so she's really stressing out that she's going to have to tell him. So, yeah. so the me, doctor... What? Around this time, me and Jenny are discussing his perm. Yeah, yeah, we were. Well, I was like, well, he first comes out, and I'm like, he's played by Robert Foxworth. Yeah. And I said, oh my God, he looks like a BG. And then I was like, oh, yeah. wait, everybody in the 70s looked like a BG. Yeah. yeah, even my dad's friends, fucking them real rednecks back in Mississippi, were getting perms. And then they'd let the back grow. So then they'd start getting a little bit of a mullet perm. That was a futuristic, futuristic perm. It was a mullet perm. And then you realize that shit, that's the same, that's the same, um, uh, basically the same haircut Rick's uh, fucking, uh, old, old fucking. Rick James had. They had Rick James hair. So it's a funny time, man. It's an awesome time. Well, I said, yeah, if you if you have the perm and then you grow the back out, you look like one of the Oak Ridge boys. Oak Ridge boys, yeah. And, the, 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 and really the hair from Oak Ridge boys and Rick James, it was the same hair. It was the same haircut, basically. Pretty, Yeah, it was. Rick James just put some beads in it. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so, so the husband and wife, um, you know, this guy comes to the doctor and uh, what's his, like, Dr. Vern, I guess his mm -hmm. name is. And uh, so somebody comes and says, okay, well, you need to get away. We need a doctor to come up. Like, you need to do, like, two weeks of work for the EPA. Because up in Maine, they're having this dispute between a tribe, like, a Native American tribe who says this land is theirs and a logging company or a paper mill uh, who say it's their land. So, you know, the Native Americans are, like, blockading the place and not letting them cut any trees down and blah, blah, blah. So this doctor is supposed to come and sort of... I guess he's kind of gonna uh, talk everybody. Does? I don't really know. And they wanted him to do like some testing around the water and everything because some of the Native Americans were saying, you know, the paper mill is polluting the water. So he goes up to go up to this uh, cabin, and right away there's like some tension between when they're trying to get up to the cabin and then like the Native Americans, including John Hawks, who's Armand Desante. And, you know, some other ones. And they have this road chained off. And uh, somehow it ends up in a chainsaw versus axe fight, as as happens uh, sometimes. So that kind of gets resolved. That was kind of a good fight. It way. was, actually. Did you understand how, how, how ridiculous this shit was? Dude was getting ready to fucking hit the dude with the chainsaw over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> fucking open the, open the fence. <laughs> fucking stupid. The Indians don't want them to cut the trees down. They're going to say, no, we're going to cut some trees down. We're going to start right now. And it's got one dude with a chainsaw, you know, kind of like the paper mill Throwing company. Throwing his nuts around. Yeah, the, kind of like the paper mill company doesn't have whole armies of vehicles that can snip a tree in half in a single fucking... You ever seen those? Well, they're trying... Yeah, but they, I guess yeah. they were trying to, like, make a point. They had to make a point, I guess. But That's fucking, what they were trying to up do. Up in Mississippi, fucking, we have the Masonite Corporation, and just a couple of vehicles can cut down about 100 trees in a day. And it just, they got a thing called, I think it's called a skitter or a scooter. I don't know the fuck. It'd run up and grab a tree around the base and at the bottom of it had snippers and it's go like that. And then the, then the vehicle would move off with the damn tree and throw them in a pile. And then they had other vehicles that drag the whole pile. They process a hundred trees in a day. And then they come back and plant a hundred, 150 trees the next day, right there in that spot. And 10 years later, they cut them all down together. There's not a single natural tree in Mississippi, all planted. <laughs> I should say too that 
not only is this paper mill trying to like encroach on these people's land, but they're also blaming the Native Americans for a series of disappearances hmm, that have been taking place in this area, which, you know, you, me, and everyone else knows are the monster is doing it. But of course, nobody else knows that. So the paper mill is just saying, these Native Americans, they're so violent and they're like, they're killing people and all these people are going missing and blah, blah, blah. So they're blaming them for that. Uh, but no, the Native Americans are pretty much like, uh, no, there's kind of this monster in the world. They call it Katahdin, right? Katahdin. Katahdin. That's what his name was. Yeah. yeah. Katahdin. Uh, and it's this big monster and it's, it's I, I don't even know if they called it like a monster. It was kind of like a no. spirit of the forest. Spirit of the forest. It had every animal was inside of it and it was, it was one with the forest basically is what they're saying. Yeah. Every creature that's there has a place in Katahdin. So the, the, the general description of Katahdin really is a mutant. Yeah. You could say, yeah. Which is a, what he is. Right. That it's all just all creatures together, all the life force of the of the forest together in one godlike creature that's huge and comes back and kicks your fucking ass. That's what Katahdin was. So when they see this damn bear, that Indian shaman goes, yeah, that's it. That's Katahdin. I he, told you guys he was out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> he, fu- he was fucked up on mercury, too. Uh, I mean, he would smoke his cigarettes down into his fingers. His fingers were all burned up because he, he didn't have any sensations. And he was he was loopy, you know, but once he saw Katad, and that was it. And in and in the end, he kind of sacrificed himself to Katad. Yeah, it basically is what happened to him. Eventually, it's good. He had a good death, though. I guess he kind of acted as a speed bump. <laughs> I mean, Katad sl- kind of picked him up yeah, and threw him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He tried to stop Katahdin or sacrificed himself to Katahdin. Or he just kind of stood there looking at it. And looked, I was like, does he think that Katahdin's going to be his butt or what? No, I think he was just not running from it because it was destiny that Katahdin was pissed and that he was going to eat you anyway. So he just stood there and it fucked like, his ass up and slowed Katahdin down for a few seconds. While people, so that other people could get away. Yeah, I don't think it made a difference, though. It looked like Katahdin could move pretty fast. And it could swim underneath the water like a submarine, come up like a shark. Yeah, it was, it was like, like Jaws. He, it was was sneaky, he's a sneaky monster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's sneaky. That it's Katana. a great movie. You know, it's cheesy, but it's 70s. It's 70s. Well, like I said, it's yeah. cheesy in a 70s kind of way, but yeah. it's really, really entertaining. Yeah. I mean, I think it's entertaining. <laughs> yeah, and it's, so, and it's a disaster movie, kind of like Air, Airport or something. Airport 77, and all that shit happening at once. It actually, it most reminded me of Piranha. Piranha yeah. was Mutants too. Remember, yeah, it was also mutant mutant piranhas. Well, the thing about it though is that it's not just. I mean, what you find out like during the course of the you know the doctor's investigation yeah. is that even though the paper mill, they even take him like on a tour of the plant and everything like that, and they're like, no, we don't pour anything because yeah, yeah, they they bleach the paper with chlorine and all this other stuff. No, nothing goes into yeah. the water. I'm like, man, I don't think that's true. And but it, but and the guy who played, she's talking about who who runs the paper mill is the same dude. Who played? I believe it was the doctor in the thing. Yeah, he was also in the. Yeah, thing. I think he was the one that he's got his. He was given the electro shock. Yeah, wasn't that him? No, no, it wasn't him. How did he die in the thing? I can't remember, he but was, he, was he was definitely the older guy. Yeah, he's definitely in it. Not di- not diabetes, not that not diabetes, not that guy. No, the other guy. Yeah. You'll recognize him when you see him. Yeah, yeah. He was in a bunch of horror movies. Yeah, he plays like the manager of the plant or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he does a good job. He's actually this is like he's like a main character in... He's got a, 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 he does a good job as a lead. So he, you know, I mean, his acting is good. It's the best. It's the biggest role I've seen him in. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So, I'm guessing now. I think he is actually maybe telling the truth about them not dumping the chlorine and stuff into the water because I don't think they find that because the doctor does actually go and like take water samples and stuff. But what they do find out, he's like, yeah, but. Uh, some of the stuff that I've seen around the village, like I said, uh, with Mirai, like not having any feeling in his fingers and being kind of crazy. Um, and he also sees some other shit, like he sees a salmon in the pond that's like really fucking big, that's like big enough to eat a duck whole. Uh, so there's that. And uh, also a lot of the Native Americans are saying like, you know, a lot of the babies were born with birth defects and stuff. So they had he, to be put down. So, yeah, yeah. So he suspects that it's probably mercury. He's like, because that wouldn't come out in the water test because mercury is heavier than water. And he does see something like on Talia Shire's shoes and is like, yeah, that looks like mercury. And so they don't find that out until later. And they've been at the cabin for a little while. And Talia Shire has still not told her husband that she's pregnant. And in the meantime, they've eaten fish that he caught out of that lake. And 
you know, I don't know if you guys know, but mercury does actually cause uh, birth defects, and it doesn't take much either. So she is like now flipping out because she doesn't know if she's going to give birth to a mutant or something. This story was actually based on a real thing that yeah. happened in Japan in 1958, I yeah. think. There was like, it was some, I, I don't know if it was a paper mill, but it was some company that was like dumping mercury, uh, mercury and wastewater. And, and it, this whole village, like they, all the people were like deformed. And yeah, they, and killed 100,000 people. Yeah, like it was like a lot, of, a lot of people. Yeah, and the movie, this movie also points out that, there, that, there ha that it was illegal to use mercury and, 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 and dump mercury into the environment in the U.S. Back even back in the 50s. They knew the shit was dangerous. Yeah. Mercury, there's a lot of shit that's bad, but mercury's right there with some of the other heavy metals. You don't, you don't, you don't want to fuck with it. You know, it's not uh, as bad as uranium, but it can be. You know, radon gas, uranium, mercury... If it gets into you, your, your, your kidneys can't get it out. And so it just fucks you up. Yeah. You know. So, yeah, so they... Lead, also. So basically what, they're, what they were doing is that the paper mill, when they would cut the logs, I guess they were treating the logs with mercury, like as a... to kill the fungus on it or whatever. Um, and that was leaching into the water, and it was leaching into this water, like, right by the Native American's village, which was causing all the birth defects and everything like that. Um, you know, so they, you know, there's fucking big giant tadpoles in there. And obviously... Yeah, the tadpole was, like, the size it was, of a <laughs> like this big. The body of tadpoles the size of, like, a football. And, yeah, and then, like I said, yeah. the salmon that he saw was, like, dolphin-sized, you know yeah. what I mean? And it ate a duck, so there yeah. was that. Which that kind of brought it to me, because, uh, you know, going up, going up to the Redwood Forest, they had fucking big-ass fucking, we called them polywogs. Yeah. And uh, some of them polywogs were, you know, the size of an egg with a tail on it. That's that's as big as I've ever seen them. And you could get down to the water as a little kid, and they'd be all swimming around you. So they'd be nibbling at you and fucking trying to get away. They were in real shallow, warm waters where they like to go. And so kids could get down in there and fucking play with the polywogs. Those fuckers were big. Some of them had little back legs. Some well, yeah. of them would look a little bit more like frogs, depending on their development. They were fun to play with. They were. <laughs> I wonder if the polywogs felt the same. They're like, no. oh no, the big They're giant paper. Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the, the, big, the, big giant, the big giant yeah, gods get, are picking us yeah, up. Yeah, and they were doing something nasty in there because you'd come out of that water stinking. So you'd have to go into fucking deeper well, they're water. Well, in it, obviously. Yeah, you had to get out in deeper water and get it all off you. Adults would go, man, man, ooh, you smell like them things, you know. And you go, yeah, okay, and you get out there and fucking red off. You're a kid, you know. You smell like tadpole poop. Tadpoles. <laughs> Maybe they were mating in there. They were probably too young to mate. <laughs> well, just, yeah, that's like that. They were just eating stuff. Tadpole and child and shitting and stuff. <laughs> Pissing. Well, that's all, all, the, all fish old, and frogs and stuff do that. They stayed the in a big old school up in fucking real shallow water up around the bank. Yeah. yeah, they liked to warm. If the water was warm, you knew they were in there. They they try to get away from you. I remember those. We used to catch yeah, them yeah. in buckets and like watch them turn into froggies. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So so this big uh bear. It's essentially, I think, the design on the poster. Like if you see the poster that kind of looks like a, I guess it's supposed to be a womb or like an egg type situation, and that has the monster in it. I think the original monster design looked more like that. But when they went to make the movie, they went with more of a bear design. It's still, it looks like a mutated bear, but it still mostly looks like a bear. Except Shaped kind more like of, a man. Yeah, well, it yeah. It was shape. It was bipedal. Yeah. It didn't run on four legs that I saw. I mean, I thought the practical effects were pretty good. I mean, yeah. for, for 1979, I think yeah. the monster looks pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. Uh, and honestly, for this being a PG movie, uh, it's not super gory. But it does have some gory shit. Like one, like the helicopter pilot gets his head bitten off. Yeah, it doesn't show a bite. They don't show. Yeah, he, they just show like him, like the the back of the yeah, he's of the struggling, monster. The monster comes, he blocks him, and, and he's then like, the monster leaves, and the head's gone. And then they make like a crunching yeah. sound it was, effect. It was that effective. was delightful. Very effective. And then like the little kid hopping away in the damn. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm that. gonna put this. I'm gonna, little I'm gonna kid put this. Away. Have to, you guys have to see it. Bag and that fucking bear goes. Like that, and he just goes fucking flying, and he hit a tree or was it a rock? I think it was a big rock. And yeah, like a boulder, and he goes boom, and it explodes, and feathers and shit, they come down. Yeah. I'm totally putting that in the I video. would not sleep with that damn sleeping bag all the way zipped up. I'd sleep with about a little, so that way I could jump out if I had to. That that got me thinking, because he was trying to hop away. Even... <laughs> 
even though seeing it now, it's yeah. hilarious. I had completely yeah. forgotten about that. I mean, it's a little kid. Yeah. I always kind of like when horror movies have the stones they to, like, kill, kill off a little kid. Yeah. Uh, like, it especially in such a ridiculously yeah. over-the-top way is that. I was like, yeah. awesome. He was but... about the same age as me, but I saw it. He was about 10. I was about 10. He's like, I remember. Oh, about what? 10. What year was this? It came out? 79. 79, so I was 10. And the fucking yeah. sleeping bag yeah. explodes. I saw that shit. I was like, oh, man. I'm like, the kid exploded. I said, I'm on the menu, man. <laughs> I can't fucking, because if he killed that kid, it'd come after me. Well, they, yeah. They knew the mind game, man. They knew. Yeah, they that's knew. what I mean. And that's why I yeah. like that's why I like the horror movies yeah. that that will go there because that's yeah. gonna be way scarier to a kid. It's like because oh, yeah. oh, you think always yeah. think kids are kinda like safe, you know? Yeah. Like in horror movies. But not this time. He'd yeah. he blew up pretty much. Yeah, we were talking about earlier. It was the same it was the same when I was watching that nineteen <laughs> fifties War of the World with that preacher going out there trying to talk to the aliens and he's praying, you know, yeah, though I walk, you know, no be if my cup hath runneth over and I go, Oh yeah, he will talk sense and to him and, and they're like the no nope. Oh, shit. <laughs> they Shut got the up. priest. Oh, man. We're fucked now. But yeah, yeah, seriously, when I had totally forgotten about the kid in the sleeping bag scene yeah. from Prophecy. So when we were watching it again, we watched it last night, and I died laughing. I yeah, just, I like, had to back it up. I fucking it cracked it up, but Tom was like, we gotta, we gotta watch that again. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. went, I'm like, yeah, watch it, let's watch it again. Yeah. And I was like, I just like laughed and laughed and laughed. Oh my god, it was so fucking funny. That's, I think that has to be one of the best movie deaths yeah. of all time. That's even better than the one from Friday the 13th Part 7, where somebody got picked up in a sleeping bag and Jason slammed him against a tree. This one's way better. This was the original. I mean, yeah, this is like the OG of that, so yeah, yeah that's like fucking It's hilarious. great. The, the kid's hopping, and the bear comes out and just goes, BAM! <laughs> And he goes fucking flying. And it's not a slow fly. It's like shot like a damn, like a hockey puck. Yeah. Bow! And he hits. It's so good. And yeah, he hits, and the fucking sleeping bag explodes. It's so good. You can tell they had a squid brown in there. They had a squid in there. It's one of the funniest things like a I've bomb ever went off. It's one there. of the funniest things I've ever seen. I was like, what a child death. I mean, it's a movie. Come on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the helicopter probably getting his head bit off is pretty good too, but that was a lot more low key. Uh, and I did enjoy, I did enjoy the monster, like, shaking your favorite Indian around. That yeah. was also pretty funny. Yeah. Although that was, like, pretty brief. But yeah. nothing could top that sleeping bag. I yeah. mean, that was, like, so fucking hilarious. But, uh, but yeah, so, uh, you know, this actually, because you were asking where this was shot. It's actually, it's supposed to be Maine. Yeah. Uh, they actually shot it in British Columbia. Okay. And Canada. interestingly... This was the first, you know how nowadays, even now, uh, they film a lot of movies in Canada because it's cheaper. Yeah. Uh, this was pretty much the first movie to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, where taking advantage of it being cheaper up there and now they call it like Hollywood North or whatever, uh, you know, filming stuff up there. And this was kind of like the first one to do that. Although, like I said, I kind of feel like this didn't really do very well, like at the box office. And it does have a lot of fans, but... A lot of the reviews from the time, um, you know, the contemporary reviews, thought that it was, like, just kind of stupid, uh, stupid and boring. But I kind of feel like people have developed more of an appreciation for it. I wouldn't even call it, I don't even think it's, like, so bad it's good. I think it's, like, a decent movie. It's a movie of its time, very standard. Yeah, it's like and, a standard 70s right. movie. It's got a good monster. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the monster looks good, and, you know, it's got... I, I honestly found most of the characters really interesting. Yeah, the reason why they were saying it was boring is because it's a movie of its time. A lot of other movies from that time felt like this. So yeah. they were just kind of bored with this. And when Alien came out, it would have just totally erased this. Yeah, that's true. The same way that same way that Logan's Run was totally erased by Star Wars. When Star Wars came out, that was it. Logan's Run was quickly forgotten. Yeah, yeah, probably the same. Which, Logan's Run was it. good when it came out for a few yeah. months and then Star Wars came out and now you never heard about Logan's Run again. But it's a cult classic now. Yeah. You know, Logan's Run. Uh, well, I do kind of like, you know, sometimes, like you said, with some movies come out, like the timing is bad. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that the movie's not any good. It just means that, you know, everybody was distracted by this other shiny yeah. object over here. So the same thing with Logan's Run television series. I have it on, on DVD. It's a great television series. A lot of the same people that worked on the old Star Trek did it. It's just that, no, that could never exist in a world where there was Star Wars. Yeah. That was, that was the end of that. But yeah, so... I think that went for, what, two seasons? Yeah. And then that was it. Yeah, and then it was they a good canceled story. it. Um, but yeah, this movie was actually... Like I said, it's PG, because they didn't have PG-13 until the, until the 80s. 
so it's not real graphic. It there was a couple scenes in it that were a lot gorier. Like I think like the guy from the thing, you know, the, he uh, he basically gets torn in half by the bear. Although they don't really show it, it's just yeah. like implied. Yeah. In the original cut, they did actually show it like he was getting disemboweled. Oh man. Um, when which, it's available. I don't know. I kind of feel like, I mean, they shot it, and then John Frank and I was like, nah, you know, he's, he thought it was, like, too much, like, over the top. Little did they know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, they. and there was also a shot, too. I don't know if they necessarily did it for ratings. I think they just thought it was, you know, the directors thought it was too much. And there was also, like, more of a close-up shot of, you know, the helicopter pilot that got his head bit off. Yeah. I think they went in more for, like, a close, because it's a little bit, it's not a long shot, but it's kind of, like, middle. Well, they, fucked, I mean? up, they fucked up by wanting a pg rating but maybe maybe i don't know maybe the market of the time the market of that day pg was the way to go because adults were kind of sick of these kind of movies probably by the time this came out yeah and then but you know fucking having some shit with it was real graphic and scary like fucking alien that worked yeah you know but they don't they didn't know though yeah it's you know, know hindsight's 2020 right. so i kind of wish they'd left the gory shit in there yeah, but it'd have been a lot better but, you know, it's yeah. still got, like, some decent gore in it. And like I said, it's got good actors in it. And I thought the, you know, I liked all the kind of, uh, you know, character interactions. All the characters were good. All the acting was good. Um, only thing, I, the ending, it's not really left ambiguous because it's like they kill, you know, the main man bear pig, right? But then, like, there's a little reveal, da 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 at the end, there's another one, which I presume is the dad, of the yeah, of the cubs that they found, it got, yeah, because it had the cubs, so there had to have been a male. So there somewhere. had to have been a male somewhere. So yeah, but they never tell you, do they? If Talia Shire's baby, and it's like turned out normal. Well, they were trying to make a damn, probably set it up for a sequel. You know, because you know, it's alive was around already. That's so right. They're they're kind of hinting on the fact that maybe her baby might be something like it's alive. That's gonna eat its this way out of her version. womb. This is the a bear version of it's alive. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. That's all. That's what it is. If you guys haven't seen It's Alive, it's, seen that's it's the alive. killer baby movie. Yeah, this is the this is the bear version of that. Yeah. So that was the thing because we were watching it, and then like at the end, I was like, "Is there a scene at the end where Talia Shire gives birth to thing?" It's like, "Oh my god!" And then the credits run, but they never tell you. Like the end is just like them jumping in their plane and getting the fuck out of Dodge. And I was like, "So we never find out like if she had a mutant baby or not." It doesn't matter. I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, no. so you, you'll never find. You out. You were sick of the movie by the time it's been <laughs> anyway. That's what they were. Like, but this, mo done. this movie done. is actually it's better than I remember. Yeah, it's alright. It's, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty good. entertaining. I yeah. found it pretty entertaining. Uh, if only just it's worth the price of admission just for that fucking sleeping bag scene which yeah. is one of the funniest things that i've ever seen in my whole entire life yeah um but yeah good monster good acting it's fun uh if you have hulu it's on there right now uh if you want to go check it out or i'm sure you can find it under other streaming services as well uh so yeah if you like fucking 70s nature run amok monster movies then you gotta see it man it's pretty fucking good uh all right so that'll do it for this movie retrospective we will see you guys on the next one bye